Hello YouTube and welcome to our 27th Unity 3D tutorial, so nearly on number 30. And so in last tutorial what we did was make it so when you walk up to a tree a little box shows up and says press C to chop, which was good, it worked. But then what I realised after I finished the tutorial and uploaded it was when you walk away from a tree, some trees don't show it at all and just automatically turn off. However, one tree did show it and it was this tree here. So in the annotations I annotated a piece of code and told you to note this bit out and don't put it in. Because in that way as soon as you walk up to a tree it stays there anyway. So yeah. But first before we're going to do that I've got a new size monitor. My old one was 1024 by 768. So 1024 across, 768 high. This one I'm using now is 1920 by 1080, so it's a big, big monitor, nearly double the size. But Unity crashes when I record it at that, because my graphics card isn't all the best, it's only on board. Well, for you, you don't need to know that, but yeah. Um, so I've had to scale it down, and I'm currently, you are currently viewing 1136 by 874, which is just under Unity's limit for my computer. So, but problem is what I'm trying to get at is if I put it back to 10 24 by 768 you can see it's not quite the same like the health hood is completely out of the way and if we change the aspect to free aspect it's out of the way it doesn't move so different monitors won't work with it which is very bad so what I've gone and done is got my mathematical friend to help me fix it and he came up with these this eight lined code which made it automatically detect the monitor and put it in the right place however um, when I first attempted this I ended up with 86 lines of code but he did it in 8 or 10 so I think that's pretty good but to start we're going to equip that so go to your scripts folder create a new folder and call it a l call it hoods no we just cut a lining there we go and in this aligning one make a new javascript and call it GUI align underscore align there we go and open this up in notepad or whatever you use so first what we need to do is get rid of our function update because we don't need that put our start menu back right there we go first we need a variable so we'll just work on the x-axis which is horizontal left to right for the first so what we basically need to do is get the original location of it then divide it by our monitor size what we're using to build the game then times it by whatever size they've got we, and if you don't understand it basically all you do is chop the numbers down set it to your monitor and put it on there so it's in the right position so first we need a variable for var and this will be for the images x location image location x and this will use decimals so we need a float and then it will equal zero for now We'll also just quickly do that for the y-axis, because then it'll save us time later. I've done that again, because then it'll save us time later. There we go. So now we're in our start one, because that's all the variables we need. Um, the, these two variables are for your locations, so you put your images in all the right locations on your monitor, full screen. So, free aspect, full screen, you put it in the exact same position you want it then you put the details in there or in the inspector, it's up to you. Um, I'm just going to put in the inspector later. Um, to st but once you've done that, now what you need to do is... Yeah, right, so we need to basically move the position of the GUI textures. However, um, we don't use the positions to move it, we use the pixel insets. So what we need to do is drag this so you can see what I'm doing is we need to go to this game object which this script's going to be attached to then we need the GUI texture so we type in GUI texture dot because we're going in further we need the pixel inset inset and then we need the dot again because we want the X for now so lowercase x equals and now in mathematics when you put brackets it always means work out what's in these brackets before you do the rest of the sum so if we were to put our location divided by the monitor size times the screen width then it may get mixed up with numbers so we put the Im get the image location divided by the monitor size in one bracket and then times the answer to that so it's simpler so we open a bracket and close it again so we know what we're doing and we're just going to put image location x so our x-axis divided by just a forward slash 
and then our monitor size. So my monitor size is 1920, and then whatever yours is, put 0 0.0. If you don't know what yours is, and um, what you want to do is go to your desktop here, right click, and choose screen resolution. And when it loads up, you will see you have this. So this is if you're on Windows 7. I think it's the same for Vista. XP, you, you will have to go through the control panel, but you'll still get the same results. Um, so mine's that, so that's my width, that's my height, so that's my x, that's my y. So that's what I need to type in to Notepad++. Plus Plus. So don't worry about that error, because that error will go away once we do. So there's my monitor size, you put yours in, and then we end the bracket, then we times that answer by screen.width, which basically gets the width of their monitor compared to ours. So yeah. Um, so then we duplicate that and change it to y, y and then screen that height however if you were to put uh, 120 for me is that right 180 that's right yeah um, it will not it will mess up because if you look at this don't when you play full screen it's the width is right but the height is slightly less because of the toolbars so what you need to do is work it out what it is before um, you do it so you can easily work this out simply just Note out this line and put print screen dot high this one. And if we were to run that now, once we attach it, so attach it to your health hood. Ignore the numbers; we don't need to put the figures on. If we were to run, we'd get a print straight away. So as you can see, mine's seven sixteen, but that's just my shrunk unity. So I'm going to put my real one for my full screen, but you will put your answer there. So get rid of that. And then you put whatever your answer you're adding here. I know mine is 950, like full screen. So yeah, that's done. That's it. We've done it. It's that simple. It really is. So now what you do is you go to image X and Y and you put the original locations in. So I actually don't have mine, so I need to set mine up. Um, I'm just going to drag it across. And... I'm not I'm not gonna do a too good of a job here. Uh, so we're going there. There we go, that'll do it. And up a bit. That's down. We'll try about two fifty. Three hundred. That'll do. It. So three hundred by minus Four six. There we go. I don't like that. Six hundred fifty. We'll just say fifty. Oh, I don't. So five fifty by three hundred. That's my details. What I put in. So my original x and y is minus five fifty point zero. If it gets rid of the point zero, don't worry about it. Just make sure you put it in just to be safe. So now if I were to run that, it should automatically align in the right place, which is there apparently. So if I try this one, it should align in the right place again. So is it actually aligning it? Let's see if it is. Yes, as you can see, it is definitely changing it and it is putting it in the right positions. It is putting it in the location we set it to. Obviously, I'll have to experiment with it because I'm trying to set it to my full screen monitor, and this is not my full screen. But I think actually, it might mine might be that. So we'll just try it like this one more time, then we'll move on to the tree chopping. Oh well, no, that's not working. But yeah, that does work. It does align it. So if you've set your monitor right. Like I said to like you've set them right and then you've set your X and Y right, it is going to work 100%. I'll look at mine after and put mine in properly. So that's all that done. Now what we're going to quickly do is make it so when we walk, walk up to a tree, it shows no matter what. Because at the moment when we walk up to a tree, it shows then never disappears. So what I figured out was we need to put a timer on it. So I'm going to quickly make a new folder in the scripts folder. In fact, I'm going to make it in the animations folder. Counts as a bit of animation. And I'm just going to call it input text controls. Because it is the text what I'll tell users how to play, kind of. 
So in Hitua, we need a way to tell when this text has got to be on and off. So I'm just going to create a simple static var and then going to call it input text active basically meaning it needs to be active and it's going to be default as false because we don't want it on and then first what we're going to do is make a new private variable so private var which basically means it can't be called from it can't be changed in the inspector and this is going to be the maximum timer so every time the timer counts down it goes back up to this so we're going to call this timer max equals and I, I know 300 is about a good and so people can read it and then it disappears so var timer equals timer max so you need another variable um, and then basically you're going to call it timer because this is our actual timer and this timer whenever it's called it will automatically equal 300 and then carry on from where it was so that's all good so when I start function we are going to type in game object because we need a way to enable or disable the GUI text so game object dot GUI text like we did for the align thing GUI text dot enabled enabled equals false so as soon as it starts it will disable it anyway so if we look at our GUI text GUI text dot enabled so it's good just basically going to tick that for us and turn it off so that's what we want what we want yeah so in here in the function update I'm going to create an if statement that if the input text active equals true so because it's a static it will be the script name input text controls dot input text active if it equals true like it does then the game object dot GUI text dot enabled so if that's true then it needs to equal true so it's on and then our timer minus equals one will start ticking down say one because then if you do like five then your time must be pointless you might as well just put 500 it's easier so then what we're going to do is now create a loop for our timer so if the timer is less than zero which eventually we'll get to then the game we're just going to copy this false thing here so we don't have to keep typing it that will equal false because then it disables it the copy this one here and paste it in here and this will equal false so it disables it turns it off so we can't see it and then reset the timer by saying timer equals timer max so there we go so that's our basic loop and then so out of this if statement here we're going to type in else if and then basically copy this bit here click paste it in here and if this equals false so if this equals false which it does we're just going to create a little safety net that if this doesn't disable it in case it shuts off too fast then this definitely will disable it so in here we're going to just copy all of this and paste it back in here there we go like that so now it'll disable it however that's it simple as that however we are missing something like I was going to say yeah so we have no way of turning this on and off at the moment so what we need to do is copy this bit here and then go into our tree chop thing which we attach to all the trees which is there which allows you to chop trees down when you're in range and if you look at it we basically have if it's in range turn it on show the text well we want to show the text but we don't want to turn it on so we're going to get rid of that and then paste hours in so now it will make hours true so it'll turn that on and start the timer ticking down so now that we've done that what we need to do is find this one here which we did and just get rid of that because we don't want that anymore and then at the bottom of the timer so when you finish chopping we want it to turn off no matter what so if it's finished chopping it turns off that's it it's not stood next to tree so that's going to be false so now we're going to attach the input text to the information panel and then fingers crossed it should work so we walk up to it and the timer should start ticking down so if you look here the timer should tick down tick 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 so when that goes to zero it'll turn off and should turn back on straight away
there we go so it shows you in the middle of the tree and if we stand back and let the timer tick down and tick it stays off stays at 300 so it's worked um, the previous script which we did if we had to put um, active equals false in here then if it's out of any tree it will automatically turn it off which we don't want so that's it please use the voting system below because that's good help for me so you can see what you want next and everything and that's it so thanks for watching please like comment and have fun